how much money that you need to prepare if you are planning to buy a property and you are going to a mortgage or finance the property. What is going on guys? This is RJ Bautista, your local incredible realtor with EXP Realty. Today, I'm going to show you how much money that you need to prepare if you are planning to buy a property and you are going to a mortgage or finance the property, okay? Because this is very, very important, especially if you are first-time home buyer, you don't know how much money that you need to prepare for your closing costs, how much down payment that you need to prepare, and also for prepaid costs and all that stuff. Let me get you all this thing for you so to make sure that when you are planning to buy a property you are prepared and ready okay but before i start this video if you're new to my channel welcome please subscribe if you haven't done so and the most important thing you know that smash that like button for me and share this video to all your family and friends especially for those people who's planning to buy a property without any idea how much money that they are going to produce on their closing onto the property they wanted to buy all right so without further ado let's jump into it so number one that you need to think is before finding a property or buying a property you need to make sure that you have a lender and make sure that talk to your lender because the lender will tell you what kind of loan that you can afford or what kind of loan that you are eligible okay there are like four main loans that you can pick or the lender could give it to you or what you can afford for those kind of loan okay i am not gonna explain all this loan because i made a video about these four kind of loans if you want to watch this kind of loans you can watch the video i will put some link up here or here and these are the four main loans that i just did in the past video okay but let me just tell you like a quick summary of this loan so number one that i want to talk about is the fha loan FHA loan is good for first-time home buyer and how much down payment that you need to provide if you are picking the FHA loan. So the FHA loan, you need to provide a 3.5 minimum of that particular loan so that if you have like a 3.5% of that loan, you will be qualified for FHA loan. However, you need to think about not every single person or not every single family will be approved for FHA loan. There are like different kind of loan out there and also they have like different qualifications if you are approved for FHA loan. Number one that you need to think is about your credit score, okay? There are like several credit score that you need to be on it or to be qualified to get a FHA loan. Let me just give you one example of what credit score that you need to be so that you will approve for FHA loan, okay? So in FHA loan, you need to have at least 3.5 down payment of maximum of 472,000 of the maximum price of the property, okay? That is for FHA loan. However, you need to think about this credit score. The credit score that you need to have is at least 3.5 down payment if your credit score is 580 and above okay however if your credit score is from 500 to 579 you need to provide at least 10 percent down payment okay i just want to clarify to you i am not a lender however i just been to my lender meeting like the other day and then they gave me like this list so that's why i'm trying to pass it to you so you will have some idea you know when you're applying a loan so that you know what where you want to be okay so that's the FHA loan. So let's go to my second one, which is the conventional loan. Conventional loan is always the priority if you are qualified for conventional loan. Why? Because conventional loan is most good loan out there because what will happen is if you have like a conventional loan, you don't have to pay a PMI. However, if the conventional loan that you are getting, you need to provide a 20% down payment to get rid of your PMI. Okay, you need to remember that one. However, you can also get a conventional loan as low as 3% for the first time home buyer. And also you can get up to 20% down payment or 
if you can do 30%, 40%, or 50% of down payment, that's good to get rid of the PMI. However, if you're only gonna get down for the first time home buyer program for 3%, you have to pay the PMI. Okay, what is the PMI? The PMI is the private mortgage insurance. You need to pay that if your loan is below 20% down payment in conventional loan. However, I forget that if you are going to FHA loan, you are going to pay the PMI as well. No matter what happened in your loan on FHA, you have to pay the PMI during your loan, okay? So remember that one. So for the conventional loan, you can get as much as 3% as a first-time home buyer for the maximum loan of 726000 200 okay i have to make sure that the numbers is in there because i just wrote down or take note from the meeting that i just been to my lenders meeting the other day okay and also you need to have a credit score remember the credit score is important here so you need to have at least minimum of 620 credit score why you need to have like a 620 credit score because conventional loans are very strict about the credit score to make sure that you are qualified for the credit score you need to have like a good credit score so that they can see that you are paying your credit or your debt in your credit card so that they will have like a peace of mind that you are going to pay your mortgage right so that's as simple as as is so make sure to remember that one okay so i will go to my last one which is the va loan va loan is very good you know you don't have to worry about your down payment it's zero down payment is va loan yes that's good it's a veteran loan which is really 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 good so not everybody can have a va loan why because the va loan is, is only for the veterans who serve the military here in our country okay so if you are in the duty or if you are you know serving our country you are eligible here in va loan but not everybody you need to make sure to double check with your lender if you are ap applicable or you are good for VA loan because they have like some rules and regulation that they need to follow and make sure that you are good to go okay so the VA loan is zero down payment which is good and the maximum on the price of the property is based on entitlement amount of the property for that particular reason or for, for that particular option you need to contact your lender okay as i said i'm not a lender i'm a realtor here but i'm just passing this message to you and the pmi the good news here is no pmi yes no pmi in this particular loan it's just because of this is what it is on this particular VA loan, okay? And also, you need to remember this loan is only good for your primary house, okay? You cannot use this loan if you are going to buy a property and then you're gonna use the property for your investment and then you're gonna rent it out. That's not gonna happen, okay? So make sure that this loan, if you're gonna use it, you are good to go for your residential or primary house because if it's not forget about it because they you will not get approved because this is only good for primary residents okay so you need to remember that one so that is your down payment for you know current mortgage price of the property so let's go to the next one which is the closing cost okay closing cost is huge okay so if you are planning to buy a property you need to prepare for your closing cost especially um if you are buying a resale house there's a lot of closing costs that you need to pay for it i will just give you like a good summary of closing costs that how much you need to prepare so that you know you will have a certain amount or you know like estimated idea how much money that you need to prepare so the closing cost is sometimes between here in florida between two percent to four percent or sometimes it could go up to five percent it depends on the property and also it depends on the location because there are some different payment that you need to include about your closing costs for example your lender fees your title fees your prepaid tax your stamp tax prepaid there's a lot of payment that you need to consider so that you know once you go to the closing on your property let's say you found a property and then you make an offer your offer has been accepted and then what will happen is once your offer has been accepted they will calculate how much money that you need to provide for your closing costs okay this kind of closing cost as i said you can get the estimate from two percent to four percent i would say around 3.5 percent you know to make sure that this is covered by your fund okay 
However, if you don't have this 3.5% to cover your closing costs, there's a solution for that. If you are going to buy a new construction house and then if you are going to pick their lender or the preferred lender of that particular new construction or builder, they will pay your closing costs. I made another video for this one if you want to watch this kind of video which you can have up to 3.5 or sometimes they give you 10,000, 15,000, 13,000 closing costs. I will put the link at the end of this video so make sure you watch this video until the end so that you will see you know this video and you will understand about the builders closing costs because it's a lot of money let's say you can have like 10,000 closing costs it's huge money all right so you need to remember that last but not the least obviously you need to pay for your prepaid costs what is the prepaid cost now RJ it's too many things that you need to remember when you are buying a property yes that's correct so that's why you make sure that you are fully understand and you are prepared before buying a property okay so the prepaid cost is like what you need to pay during your stay they call like sometimes this is they call like prorated taxes okay when you are selling a property you need to pay a property tax or if the seller selling a property or if you're gonna buy a property obviously you need to pay a property tax otherwise you know you will be in trouble so what will happen is the property tax sometimes they call it like a year property tax so whenever you are buying a property they have like a cut off let's say the property tax from January to February the seller paid from the last year from 2022 and now it's March so 2023 January February March so you have the three months there that the seller is not paid so what will happen is they can prorate the tax for you so it means like what whenever you're gonna stay in the property that's the how much money that you are going to pay to prorate that property tax and that will be calculated for your prepaid cost so make sure that you understand this bit because there's a lot of stuff that you might not know when you are going to close because at the end of the day when you are good to go and then when you see all this seller's net sheet or buyer net sheet what you're going to pay you might get shocked and say who oh, what is this right so make sure you are prepared for this so this is the video for today i know i'm talking too much i'm ending my video right now hold on before i end this video if you watch this video until this end comment down below closing costs so i can see how many people who watch this video and i really appreciate your time and once again thank you for watching i'll see you on my next video peace what is going on guys hold on my e it's itchy ah damn ah let's do it again part two <laughs>